Identity. In accordance with the Webster Dictionary, it is defined as a relation established by psychological identification or distinguishment of the personality of an individual. But much like a person hypothetically created from a clone, what is your identity when your existence is manifested without the years of development to establish an authentic identity? Much like Angela Orozco, Maria too suffered from an existential crisis, just under a difference in condition. Before focusing on the inner side of Maria though, let's quickly observe what we can see on the surface. Maria sports a deep red button-up jacket with a leopard print skirt with colors to match. She also rocks some big black boots and a choker to finish off her outfit. While this is speculation, it is known information that a talented singer by the name of Christina Aguilera donned the same exact outfit at the 1999 Teen Choice Awards. Why is this important though? This can signify a few different things than just a simple imitation. Maria is already dressed in a way that isn't of her own choosing, but more so of a manufactured or artificial look. I bring that up because pop stars in the music industry are marketed to look like something they themselves are not for the sake of universal appeal. What I mean by that is image. Articles on celebrities often contain heavy edits to give them unnatural proportions and bodies free of wrinkles and blemishes, even though they may be old as dirt. But without the added background of Maria's look, one would have never assumed that of her appearance. Maria also sports a butterfly tattoo on the side of her stomach. While the butterfly itself can represent many things, what it's known for the most is of course, the cycle of its life. A small caterpillar eats and changes into a chrysalis. After a period emerges a beautiful butterfly. But the beauty of the butterfly also in a way marks its tragedy. Meaning its form is but a fleeting one. So in a way the butterfly tattoo Maria could also be a reminder that just like a butterfly, she may be everything James could desire, but that fulfilled desire would be short lived. Before diving into the few scenes of Silent Hill 2 involving Maria though, I wanted to touch on her backstory covered in the Born From A Wish scenario. In Born From A Wish, we see a much more vulnerable and uncertain Maria than the one in Silent Hill 2, which makes sense as this took place before her first encounter with James. At the start of this prequel, Maria awakens in the heavens night almost as if she just appeared there. After wandering around, she ends up in a mansion of Ernest Baldwin, who converses with her in an odd manner. We only hear Ernest's voice, but we never actually see him. He does indicate to Maria, though, that he needs a certain liquid to help him bring back his dead daughter by the name of Amy. After the retrieval of this liquid, Ernest tells Maria about a man by the name of James Sunderland and how he is a terrible man. He states that James is looking for you that isn't you to Maria. But for unknown reasons, this information alone triggers memories of James inside of her. Before her departure to the Rosewater Park where we meet her in Silent Hill 2 though, Maria learns that Ernest was never there in the first place. This could mean that just like Ernest's existence, Maria's existence may be nothing more than an illusion in itself. Before the scenario ends though, we see Maria point her revolver to her head. This scene to me has always been a bit confusing though. Even though Maria has not met James at this point, she contemplates dying before continuing to exist. I take this scene as Maria testing to see if she too is nothing more than an, an illusion like Ernest or an actual person. If I pull this trigger, will I die or simply be unfazed by it? By her not pulling the trigger though, I do believe it was for her own mental health to be better off not knowing the real answer to that action. Mary? No, you're not. Do 
I look like your girlfriend? No, my late wife. I can't believe it. You could be her twin. Your face, your voice, just your hair and clothes are different. Her name is Maria. I don't look like a uh, ghost, do I? With the added context, this line is a bit ironic, isn't it? See? Feel how warm I am? You're really not Mary. I told you. I'm Maria. Sorry. I was confused. Where are you going? As Maria converses with James, notice how she also probes for information. This is done to help her learn of what James likes or dislikes so she can work towards his affection. Oh yeah, three years ago. But I got a letter from her. She says she was waiting in our special place. And that's here? Anyway, I haven't seen her. Is this your only special place? You're coming with me? You were gonna just leave me? No, but... With all these monsters around? No, I just... I'm all alone here. Everyone else is gone. Take notice of how Maria's reaction here went from a state of observation to one feigning distress at the drop of a pen. This first meeting already shows how Maria plans to win James over, through manipulation of course. This is further supported by her next few lines. I look like Mary, don't I? You loved her, right? Huh, or maybe you hated her. Don't be ridiculous. So it's okay? Yeah, fine. James! Mary? Oh, Maria. It's you. I thought you were... Sorry. Anyway, I'm glad you're alive. Anyway? What do you mean, anyway? You don't sound very happy to see me. I was almost killed back there. Why didn't you try to save me? All you care about is that dead wife of yours. I've never been so scared in my whole life! You couldn't care less about me, could you? Once again, notice how manipulative Maria is in this conversation with James. She gauges her connection to James by his reaction to her disappearance, and then immediately becomes enraged when that reaction isn't the one she wanted. Her behavior here is very aggressive and selfish as she continues to drive home a point of Mary being dead to James. I believe she keeps stating this to try and convince James that this is indeed true, so he should simply move on and just be with her. No, I just... Then stay with me! Don't ever leave me alone! You're supposed to take care of me! After her attack on James, she suddenly switches back into her distress state once again. What Maria is doing here is undoubtedly a cycle of abuse in which the abuser in one moment can be explosive and violent, whether it's physical or emotionally, and then in the next moment reconciles with the victim and acts as though nothing ever happened. Maria also goes on to mention Laura after this, which is a bit odd as she has no direct connection to Laura. But feel free to leave in the comments below about what you guys think of Maria's desire to protect her. During this chase scene, James manages to enter the elevator, but Maria does not, and she is then presumed to be killed by Pyramid Head. So when James encounters her here, he is surprised to see her alive. Almost as if Maria was rebirthed due to her short life. Maria? That thing! It stabbed you! There was blood everywhere! Stabbed me? What do you mean? It chased us to the elevator, and, James, and then- James, what are you talking about? Just before, don't you remember? James, honey, did something happen to you? After we got separated in that long hallway? Are you confusing me with someone else? 
You were always so forgetful. Remember that time in the hotel? Maria? You said you took everything. But you forgot that videotape we made. I wonder if it's still there. How do you know about that? Aren't you Maria? I'm not your Mary. So, you're Maria? I am. If you want me to be. This entire scene is meant to confuse us as a player as well as James because of how Maria acts here. Her behavior is very calm and calculated versus the aggressive and distressed Maria we knew in each previous interaction. Don't worry though, this is just Maria once again testing James's reaction to see how he responds to further manipulation. All I want from you is an answer. It doesn't matter who I am. I'm here for you, James. See? I'm real. Don't you want to touch me? I don't know. Come and get me. I can't do anything through these bars. Okay. Stay right there. I'll be there soon. A few more events take place which I skipped over as they signify more so of a punishment to James and not to Maria. But fast forwarding to the end of the game, specifically the Maria ending, we see that after the final boss fight, James is back at the Rosewater Park where he met Maria originally. This scene of course implies that this cycle for James is doomed to repeat once again as he has not learned his lesson. This is further supported in the credits in which Maria coughs just like Mary did. But most importantly, we notice how normal Maria acts now knowing that James is all hers. But what does this all mean? While Maria's life wasn't destroyed by her family, due to her constructed existence, if James is out of the equation, then she is too. And one way she can succeed in her mission to obtain James, but suffer just like Mary did. And the other way, she is simply killed by the man that she was created to desire. Though this is speculation, one must also imagine what if Maria did run off of James and never develop the disease like Mary did. What happens when James eventually wants to discard her for someone else? Once again, her assigned identity is to be with James. If James is out of the equation, then so is she. This of course is just food for thought, as this outcome solidifies the reality Maria can never escape from as a being manufactured for another. In Angela's case, we see her only a few times throughout Silent Hill 2, and each time we see her, we watch her mental state take erratic turns that eventually lead us to her acceptance. In Maria's case, we see a woman using what little she knows to obtain a man she was brought into existence for. Due to the game's perspective, we see Maria simply as a temptation for James to replace Mary. But by looking deeper into who Maria is, her existence is just as sad as any others in Silent Hill 2. As not only can she never fulfill her purpose, but she too is doomed to suffer because of someone else. <laughs>